Welcome to module five of our course in management accounting. This module is all about costs and understanding our costs. So, so far, the key concept has been material, labor, and overhead. That equals our product costs. Now we're just going to talk about how costs behave in this chapter. And I'll show you what I mean. And a lot of these concepts will already be familiar to you. So let's imagine we're a company like Coke or Pepsi. We make beverages. And uh, let's talk about the canned beverages. So we have some factory somewhere and it makes beverages in a can. Well, let's imagine, okay, we're Coke or Pepsi and we make aluminum canned beverages and we're wanting to track the cost of aluminum in our factory. Well, of course, the cost of aluminum is going to move in proportion to the amount of beverages we make, right? If I make a thousand cans of Pepsi, uh, I need a, a thousand you know, pieces of aluminum, I, I suppose it'd be one way of putting it. And so if I look at my aluminum cost compared to my activity, which is making cans of Pepsi, it's going to graph like this. If I make zero cans of Pepsi, I spend zero dollars in aluminum. And if I make a million cans of Pepsi, I spend uh, whatever it is, hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm sure, in aluminum. But the cost is going to behave like this. And you and I know that this would be an example of of a variable cost. It's a cost that moves directly in proportion. One more can of Pepsi means one more uh, piece of aluminum needs to be supplied here and therefore my aluminum cost goes up. It goes up directly proportional to what I make. That's a variable cost. Now, for Pepsi, they presumably they own that factory and they pay property taxes on the factory. So their property tax cost if they make one more can of Pepsi, it doesn't change. They could make zero cans of Pepsi, and if they own the factory, they gotta pay the same amount of property tax as if they made a million cans of Pepsi. Their property tax graph looks like this, and we would call that a fixed cost. Now, Pepsi is also going to have something like a mixed cost, which is an example here might be their utilities bill, where they have to pay some fixed amount to be even hooked up to the grid, and then they pay based on usage. And so a mixed cost looks something like this, where it's like there's a fixed element where they pay some minimum fee to be hooked up to the grid. And then as soon as they start you know, using the utilities, they start using electricity, they pay uh, additional cost based on usage and of course the more cans of Pepsi they make the more utilities cost there's going to be and so those are three cost concepts we're introducing this chapter but there's you know costs can come in funny shapes and sizes again if I go back to Pepsi let's say uh, the the factory works for eight hours a day and then shuts down right and somebody says ah, you know what we might add a second shift we might go from you know nine to five and then have you know, you know eight to four and then have somebody go in from four to midnight and and maybe it works and they go and they get the bright idea. Oh, maybe we'll add a third shift. We'll do an overnight shift from midnight to eight in the morning. We're going to run our factory 24 hours a day, which some factories do. Well, then their supervisory costs kind of look like this. For the first shift, you know, let's say we pay a flat salary to our supervisor group. And then when we add the second uh, shift, it's not like the same people can just get paid the same amount. No, we got to bring in a whole second group of supervisors and the supervisory cost would double. And let's say we add a third shift. Well, then the supervisory uh, uh, costs go up again on that third shift. And so the cost curve looks like this, right? It looks like a big staircase. And we would call that a step cost or a step fixed cost. In this case, we can have similar step variable costs that just look like, you know, a small staircase. I'm not drawing it very well, but I think you're getting the picture that it like has like just goes up in chunks. We would call that a step variable costs and costs don't have to be made up of straight lines. Costs can curve to reflect like learning curves, right? So you're, you're beginning to learn to make the product. It's very expensive. And then you figure out how to make it. And then sometimes companies reach capacity and any additional product they make actually gets more expensive because you just don't have the facilities to make it. And so it gets harder and harder to squeeze out an extra product. And we would call this a curved cost. Sometimes these are called curve linear costs, but I just call it a curved cost curve. 
Okay, and so, and there's, as we'll go over in the chapter, there's all kinds of shapes and sizes to costs, but it's going to be important, and, and the key concept of the chapter is based on these two key assumptions we're going to make about costs. One is that companies operate in a relevant range. In other words, if I go to my Pepsi factory, they're not making zero cans of Pepsi. Like zero is a ludicrous number for them. Like they're going to make, you know, every year they make between 1 million and 1.5 million cans at this factory, say. I don't need to even really think about zero. I also don't really need to think about a billion. I can say, well, in the relevant range, this is how the cost behaves. And so, you know, they might say, okay, the relevant range for us is somewhere between here and here, right? Which is 1 million cans cans and 1.5 million cans. And so I don't need to consider factors really outside of that because sometimes these, like, you know, if I look at the curve linear one, you know, Pepsi doesn't need to consider making zero cans down here and they don't need to be considering making 100 million cans up here if they're always making between one and 1.5 million. That's what they should be thinking about. Okay, so there's a relevant range to, to think about the costs. And the second one is key, and this is an assumption, and we know it's not a perfect assumption, but it's that costs are linear in the relevant range. And what, what do we mean by costs are linear? It means a straight line would be a good enough way to draw this graph. Drawing a perfectly straight line is good enough, but like, look, some costs look like a staircase. That's not a straight line. This cost is clearly curved. That's not a straight line. Well, the idea is, let's just, let me grab my ruler here. Oh, I, I messed up some, uh, you can see the zoom change. I got to click something. Uh, okay. Here's my ruler. Uh, let's, let's look at the, uh, step variable cost. The idea is, if I did a tr good job drawing it, if I draw a line that looks like this, right, that's good enough for making decisions. I could pretend that even though I know the costs are going to be a little bit off from my line, drawing a line close enough, I can make good judgments and I can understand my costs if I just drew that line instead of drawing the staircase. And the same is true for my curve cost, because if I just look at the relevant range where Pepsi operates and I just go, okay, I'm gonna just draw a line through this. That red line I've drawn, we would say close enough. Like it doesn't need to be perfect because I'm making predictions and plans for the future. And if I can use linear data, I can do very powerful things. And we're gonna learn about those powerful things Next chapter, this chapter is all about wrangling funny shaped costs into straight lines. And it's a little bit mathy. If you've taken a math class before, you've seen this formula before. This formula is a cornerstone of our class. So uh, in accounting, Y is our uh, total cost. It's our cost. M is our cost per unit of activity. So for Pepsi, it's like, you know, cost per can produced, right? If we're thinking about the canned Pepsi, uh, X is the activity level. So that's how many cans am I making? And B is the fixed cost. If you've taken a math class, you'll know Y is called the dependent variable, M is the slope of the line, X is the independent variable, and B is the intercept. So those, and it's all the same sort of math uh, that's going on, so it's linear math. And what we find by the end of the chapter, and actually the next chapter, is we're gonna use this information about our fixed cost, our variable cost per unit, to do some powerful decision-making for a company. But it all hinges on this. We have to assume that within that relevant range, costs, a, a, a linear a line does a good enough job uh, of explaining the cost. We know it's not perfect, right? This red line doesn't perfectly match the green uh, line underneath, but we think a straight line does a good enough job. So this class or this module, all about wrangling these funny shaped costs into lines. So big focus here, that's mod five. The best way to learn, as I always say, is to do examples, and I got lots of them waiting for you. Can't wait to get started. Bye-bye.
The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.